Welcome to Retrobot, the YouTube channel where we feed a friendly space robot a diet of pure nostalgia. Tonight, it is the official beginning of the holiday shopping season, which, um, you know, I, I was seeing Christmas crap in the stores like a month ago, and they've been playing holiday music that entire time. And for anybody who doesn't know, I, I hate Christmas carols. Um... I didn't used to, but I, I once added up the amount of time that you spend hearing the same collection of about two dozen songs over and over again whenever you're out shopping, and I figured out that I've actually spent several years hearing those same songs, like, continuously, if you took all the time and put it together, and now, now, um... Yeah, I'm, I'm done with it. So, nonetheless, today is the beginning of the holiday shopping season. It is called Black Friday, and so since holiday shopping sucks, and, um, and going out amongst the public is kind of crappy anyway, then we are not celebrating that. Instead, we are celebrating Black Prime Day, the day when we commemorate the many, many dark color-themed Prime toys that have been produced over the years. Here they are. I only work in black, and sometimes very, very dark gray. Yes, it's many, many versions of Prime, dark evil, twisted versions of Prime. But before we go into those, let's thank some people for showing up because this is not about, this is not so much about the Primes. It's not even about me. It's not even about Retrobot. It's about all of you coming here to watch me show off my toys. So let's see, let us welcome a toast to Kyoji. Ah, by the way, I am uh, I'm celebrating with a uh, with an adult cup of Han. That is, uh, Han is a a drink that my friend Chris and I came up with. It's uh, hot chocolate with a scoop of vanilla ice cream in it, and then this also has Bailey's because it's uh, now the holiday season, and um, you know, in a wonder, it's a wonderful life. Uh, it was Bailey's Building and Loan. George Bailey, you know, yeah, that, that's it, Bailey's. So, uh, also a toast to Koji, a toast to Sea Striker 87 who found us on Twitter. Thank you for joining us. I hope that you have a very good time. A toast to Thai Guy. Welcome, Thai Guy. Thai, thai Guy, Thai Guy. I can say Thai Guy. Oh, that's good. Uh, welcome, Connie! Thank you for joining us tonight, Connie! And Collie D, back from last night! So, so we didn't drive you away, I'm so glad! So, welcome back, and I hope that you have even more fun tonight! And then Chris Remley! Chris, thank you for joining us! It wouldn't be the same without you, Chris! And, uh, of course, a toast to Monica, and a toast to Retrobot, and, and I have to drink twice, one for Monica, one for, and one for Retrobot, and a toast to Wesley, who has joined us this evening. I know you don't see Wesley in the, uh, conversation, that's because he's on my lap. This is, this is Wesley. And, um, Wesley would like us to keep it down. Ah, <laughs> oh, sweet kitty. I, I, I love him. And, and he loves my lap. And he was very, very angry earlier this evening when I was busy, like, moving around and stuff and not sitting down so that he could sleep on my lap. I, 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 I am very inconsiderate. And I apologize, Wesley. And I apologize to all of you. I should not keep Wesley waiting. So, so yes, uh, we are doing 
Black Primes. I love Black Primes. I mean, you take Optimus Prime, and he is essentially the father figure for the entire 80s generation. And then you come up with an evil version of him and give him a cool ass name like Nemesis Prime. And there's there's no part of that that isn't awesome. He's got usually black or very dark blue. It's, you know, we, we say black primes, but a lot of time it's very dark blue and teal, but it looks better when they highlight him with red. And we're going to see that with all of these guys. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first. Oh, wait, wait. Do we have a, do we have a secret word? We, we do not have a secret word. We are going, um, I think that, uh, that, what? Dark? Dark. Dark. And we could just go with Prime. I'd get drunk if it were Prime. <laughs> Okay, let's not go with Prime. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we'll show the secret word in just a bit. Uh, we, we forgot. Okay, I'm going to own it. I'm just going to own it. I know that there are plenty of people out there that like to carry on as though nothing happened, but not me. I'm going to own up to it. I forgot to do the little the little board that has the, the, the secret word on it. But the secret word is... Dark. I, I, I like I like what's being done with the K there. <laughs> that's, that's nice. And whenever whenever I use that, then then I have to drink. Ah. Yeah. That's some that's some good stuff. And uh, I'll I'll set this down. So we thanked people. We've now done the secret word. By the way, that was very good. You got that done in record time. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our earliest official version. At least as far as I can tell, this is the earliest official version of a of an evil Optimus Prime toy that was created. Even though it wasn't really it, like if you go into the, the story, it wasn't really an evil version of Optimus Prime. It was just an evil guy that accidentally got Optimus Prime's Transformers DNA in his scan when he scanned an oil tanker. That's right, we are talking about Scourge, which, uh, honestly, I'm, I've never been a real big fan of the name Scourge for this guy. Um, I, I, I like Nemesis Prime, but, but this is... Car Robots Scourge, and let's make some room here because we have we have a lot of dudes that that we got to go over and not nearly enough space. So let's just move some some stuff out of the way, and that way you can really get to see and appreciate Scourge in all of his splendor. This is a repaint of Transformers Generation Two. Laser Optimus Prime. If you remember, uh, Car Robots as a series was made up of a lot of random stuff. It was not a typical uh, toy line that had a, a lot of its own releases. Uh, it had some Gen 1 stuff recolored. It, it had, uh, you know, like Bruticus was, uh, was recolored as Ruination. But it was straight up repaints of the Gen 1 molds. Uh, we had Fortress Maximus, who was Fortress Maximus, just as a recolor in, uh, at that same time. Uh, Skybite was from Beast Wars. Uh, I, was he still Skybite or was he like Sky Shark or something like that? I think he might have been Sky Shark or something. I, I actually don't remember Skybite from Beast Wars, but it was obviously a Beast Wars character and then you have Megatron who was an unrealized Beast Wars character at least for for the series um so yeah it was a mishmash of a lot of stuff and uh and so of course since they were drawing from a lot of stuff they they copied <coughs> excuse me one of 
my favorite Optimus Prime toys from back in the day. Uh, this is Laser Optimus Prime, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and show you my uh, my Laser Optimus Prime. So uh, this is, of course, you know I can't leave my toys alone. Uh, you'll notice that this version of Optimus Prime is sporting more of a Gen 1 color theme. The original version, uh, all of this plastic was gray. And then he had sort of rainbow colored stickers in the windows. One that said Optimus and the other that said Prime. And I, I, I didn't like that. Uh, I, I just... That didn't do it for me. So I did this, uh, I did some repainting on him. Uh, he, uh, he has light effects so that in truck mode, his headlights light up, which, which is cool. And also he has an LED in his fist, which uh, presumably makes his blaster or his sh sword light up. And uh, he had some great accessories. Now, unfortunately, this sword is starting to yellow, which is very sad. But uh, nonetheless, you can put the sword in there, and then then you do the uh, and and you can't really see it. Yeah, you know, there. You can there. You can sort of if if you turn out all the lights, the sword slightly illuminates, and then uh, and and then you've also got the uh, the. Uh, gun which here we can take the gun out of there and we can put the gun right there and there's some light piping and maybe we'll get some effect can can let's line this up yeah you can you can sort of see that yeah you see that yeah it, you can see the 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 red led at uh, at one point i did put an led in his head so that his eyes would light up too and uh and i put some i actually put some metal contacts in this piece here so that they would uh they would attach to some wires here when when you had them transformed but uh but it's not turning on and i'm not sure why so uh you know I know it's it's sad. So uh, Kyoji says that Cyber Shark was the Beast Wars version of Skybike, and and oh, we have him, we have him. So of course we have the robots in disguise version of Skybite, and uh, at some point we'll have to do a live stream all about Skybite. And during that three-hour live stream, I will transform him once. So, and then this is Cyber Shark, which, uh, you know, it's, it's a really cool toy, but it is really hard to transform. I mean, everything is in the way of everything. It is, it is a monster. And so I'm not even going to try because we've got, we've got other stuff that, that we want to talk about here. We've got Scourge. So the, uh. The story on Scourge is that, uh, at least in the Car Robots cartoon, he was, uh, he was a reprogrammed protoform that uh, Megatron intercepted and reprogrammed for evil. And then, uh, then when he was scanning a tanker truck to get a vehicle mode, it was in distress. The real Optimus Prime, who in that series was a fire truck. So, you know, he didn't look like this Optimus Prime really at all. Uh, his robot mode was similar, but it scanned both the tanker truck and the Optimus Prime, and that gave him an Optimus Prime-like like robot mode. And so he was named Scourge. And then uh, this, like I said, this is a fantastic toy. This is one of the nicest versions of any prime toy and especially in this color scheme it is far superior to the original uh the original we have this just ridiculous sticker on the side uh okay i'm just gonna confess i <laughs> i actually kind of like it i like it if this sticker ever got damaged and started looking nasty, I would make a new one. It is so over the top, but 
it's awesome. And if I owned a tanker truck, you better believe that I would pay the thousand dollars for the vinyl decal to to put this on the side of my tanker truck. I absolutely would. Uh, yeah, it's definitely got that '90s aesthetic. So, uh, so yeah, um, as as ridiculous as that is, uh, it, I I do like it. But you look at this. And this is just gorgeous. I mean, that's beautiful. That has got so much chrome. And it looks realistic. It's a really nice truck toy. Now, unfortunately, there are no electronics in this. So there's this little button here that does nothing. There's a battery chamber that they actually put a black sticker on. I had to peel off the sticker because I thought that it had batteries that just didn't work. No, there's no battery contacts. It's still got the door, but there's no, there, there's nothing in here that lights up. Not that I couldn't make it light up. It would be easy. All the molds haven't been changed at all so it would take very little for me to put in some leds and use modern super bright leds that's what i should do to my optimus prime too replace all those leds with some super brights get the head working maybe do the same thing to scourge here because the light up feature is nice it's simple but it's nice and this is a case where it's an extra gimmick that doesn't detract from the design of the toy, like sound boxes that we saw used heavily in Armada and Energon. So Ty Guy says, as a design, it is awesome, but not really a disguise to plaster your own name all over yourself. Uh, let's just let's just say that Optimus Prime has gained a certain amount of notoriety from one of his earlier modes, and maybe he's disguised as a fan of himself. It would be like if Weird Al Yankovic wanted to go out into public and he didn't want people to recognize him, so he puts on some, some, some shades and a Weird Al Yankovic t-shirt... And he just pretends to be a super enthusiastic Weird Al fan. That would work, right? That that probably wouldn't work. Uh, let's see. Kyoji says, I'm sure Toy Hacks has repro labels for that. And you know what? I have been checking out their website ever since you showed me that to try and, uh, try and update some of my stuff. Uh, Christopher Remley says... So, Narcissist, Narcissist Prime, <laughs> yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Narcissist Prime, there you have it. <laughs> oh, the new Autobot leader who, uh, who, take, uh, who takes over after the usurper Amazon Prime stole his title as best Autobot leader. <laughs> Uh, oh, and, and more importantly, I still have my wrench, uh, and, you know, I, I, I like my wrench. D did I show everyone my wrench? I like the wrench. Anyway, so, yeah, Narcissist Prime, Nemesis Prime, all good primes. Let's go ahead and show some of the cool things that this has got going for it. Let's start with the, uh, with the trailer. It's got a fantastic trailer. So to transform this thing, and you know what, I better, I better adjust the camera. This is, so we'll see if there's enough room on this table for this to happen. Uh, let's move you, Nemesis Prime, and we'll move you, Scourge. Okay, so you you undo this, and then there's a little switch right down here, and I'm gonna press that switch and we're gonna see if this this does what it's oh 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 yeah it it did the thing and you know really it's it should be faced the other way um so we've got the the gun here that ideally should should stay uh there i, I think that it goes like that 
And uh, then we've got this, which has a full array of missiles and extra missiles stored inside here. And so we've got... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know what? I can't be sh shooting Nemesis Prime with his own missiles. If only I had another Transformer. If only I had some other... Maybe an Autobot that he could try his weapons on. Let me let me pull one out completely at random. Oh look, it's Wheelie! Let's take a look at uh, and see how these missiles work on Wheelie. And uh, we'll, we'll transform Gen 1 Wheelie here. You don't mind, do you? Do you, Wheelie? <laughs> I won't lie, I wanna die! And uh, you know what? We'll help you with that, pal. So here we go. We've got Gen 1 Wheelie. And then uh, let's just maybe press all of these buttons at the same time, if that's possible. Oh! Oh, that's a shame. Oh, there we go. So, yeah, um, that seemed really effective and lots and lots of fun. So the, that's... See, they just don't make toys that do that. Look, that's, that is a, that is a really impressive missile launcher. I, I love this. I'm going to go ahead and load that up. Yeah, that's, that's great. So, so we take this missile launcher and, uh, and y yeah, Kali D, that was satisfying. I agree. And so this snaps on here and I guess technically speaking, this is the back of the uh, of the thing here. We've also got this plunger gimmick, which uh, the plunger gimmick I was never like super excited about, but the, but it does have it and it works and it's actually pretty effective. So let's see if we can move things around here. Uh, got of course uh, we have the disc shooter which is on the top, and, and there is a design flaw here. The design flaw is that whenever you, whenever you tip this, all the discs just come spilling out. I really need to make a cover here, or even maybe just like some kind of little lever or something to hold the discs in, because I, I like to keep it loaded, but then as soon as I store it, the discs just go everywhere. But we have these discs. And they go in like this. Oh, oh, oh. And uh, there we go. And now we've also got, uh, we, we can actually now snap this over here. Oh, 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 oh. Don't want it to do that. All right. This is, this is going to be tricky. My setup was not really engineered for these uh, large base modes. There we go, we just popped that on there. So now we've got the array of missiles. And now let's resurrect Wheelie. This isn't Jive, it's great to be alive! Oh, Wheelie, you are so optimistic. Let's just set him right there. And, uh, and let's see, so this, uh, here, wait, we're going to put, put him right there and see it has this little knob here. And when you twist the knob, so, uh, yeah, that's, uh, oh, that one got stuck. There, there we go. Yeah. So that works really, really well. Love that gimmick. Oh, darn it. Uh, poor Wheelie. You, you look like you're not doing so good, pal. Uh, is there anything we can do for you? Um, I, I'm sorry. I can't think of a good rhyme for a response. We're just going to wake him up here. And, uh, and we're going to see what happens if we, uh, if we squeeze this missile plunger. Oh, wait. you got to be able to see what's going on here. So I guess... We, uh, we go like this. Oh, okay. And it's a long missile. So, uh, let me, let's try this. Uh, there. 
Okay, uh, I think that we're just gonna have to. Oh, no, no, no. Do, do you have to be sm Okay, there we go. There we go! So, yeah, we've got, uh, we've got the missile that works. We got, and it also has an extra missile, uh, stored in here. So, you know, they, they really went all out for this mode. And, uh, I, I love it. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, especially if you have a Gen 1 wheelie, then there's a lot that you can do with that. Uh, oh, and Joy is here! A toast to Joy! Ah, oh yeah. I'm, uh, I'm enjoying that George Bailey's. So, let's go ahead and take a look at Scourge himself. Uh, so you have a great looking truck mode. I mean, this is a great looking truck mode and I especially love the red windows and red headlights. I mean, nothing says Evil Prime like red tinted windows. The, uh, the teal accents actually work. Uh, I would be okay with those being red, but I feel like teal is unexpected and unique. And, uh, and that makes it a little bit more interesting than what we would typically get with a bad guy color scheme. But, uh, you know, the chrome accents look great. The, uh, uh, the grill looks great. This is just a fantastic toy. It's just, it's so much fun. And if you only had one Optimus Prime toy, you, you wouldn't be too bad off to have this one because it's just so much fun and so well done and, and easily holds up against any of the modern versions. Uh, Kyoji says, like the Hot Wheels style chrome accented wheels. Yes, it, 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 look at that. Yeah, those are, those are gorgeous. That's fantastic. So... Excellent, excellent toy. I'm going to transform him into a robot. Uh, and the nice thing is, is that his conversion is interesting, but not all that complicated. So, you, you know, very, very playable. Let's go ahead and flip the feet down and we'll pull the legs out and then we'll separate them. And then we're going to pull out the arms, split the front. And now you do kind of a, there's sort of a double joint here at the shoulders and you do that. Now I have seen it transformed incorrectly like this. You can do that. I don't like it, but you can do it. Really it's, and I like the big shoulders. All right, you know, to me, the big shoulders are like, you know, that just adds to the effect. And then you open, this is very interesting. You open up the grill and what's, what's weird is that they could have had the head in here and just had a cavity here, but they opted to just have this be a, uh, a flat panel. And then you open up the, the midsection and there's a little notch here and that allows you to flip the head up and then spin it around and we've got the light piping on the head and uh, the light piping works really really well on this toy so it, you can see that if I if I black if I put my hand around the back then you know his eyes are pretty dark and then whoa dark whoa so really really good light piping effects and uh, and he's he's got full articulation. He's got great shoulder movement and arm movement. And uh, his fists do not twist, but that's you know that's one of the rare things that doesn't move on this guy. He's got fully articulated hips, knee joints. Because of the transform, you've got a pivoting foot, and then you've got a uh, a, a pink sword. Um, the pink sword is a little less intimidating than I than I feel like like a, a deep red would be, but I'll I'll, I'll I'll let that slide. And then of course you've also got the uh, the blaster cannon, which you can leave on top of the base mode, or you can have him hold it. Either way works. And oh, Machiavellic is here! A toast to Machiavellic! Welcome! Thank you for coming. 
Oh, that's good. That is so good. Before before we started, Monica said there's a lot of Baileys in that, so go easy. And I'm I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I'm just not. But you know, yesterday was Thanksgiving. We're we're celebrating, right? You know, we're we're being thankful by imbibing adult beverages. That's that's how we're celebrating, I guess. So, yeah, this. Let, let's go ahead and show on the other camera, Nemesis or Scourge. You know, technically he is Scourge. Oh, also we will uh, we will point out that he's got the upside down Autobot symbols, and these are Gen Two Autobot symbols. So yeah, you know, he's like down with the Autobots, not like not like he's down with the Autobots. He's like down with Autobots. There's a difference. Um, it depends on where you put the comma, I think. So so yeah. Uh, but he looks great. And this repaint is an excellent repaint. And, and I'm, I'm going to say it again. It is far superior than the toy that it was originally molded from. Uh, it, it just looks better. Uh, it, it's more flashy. The colors are more interesting. Uh, he's, he's just a gorgeous figure. And... Uh, and, you know, I feel like he rivals even the Prime toys that that have come out over the last several years. It's just such a good, good toy. A great mold and a great version of the mold. You know, possibly the best version of this toy mold. So, uh, yeah, if you ever get the chance to get the the car robots version of scourge um he's great he now i, I will uh, i will let you know because I, I know there's some purists out there who feel like if they don't have a lot of die cast metal then they're just not worth it um let's face it transformers haven't had die cast metal in them for quite a long time at this point the only way to get die cast metal in your transformers is to get the masterpiece versions uh there was the the uh titanium line that was mostly die cast parts but those toys actually weren't very good uh, a lot of the toy designs suffered because they they had to use plastic for the hinges and for the ball joints because the metal just didn't lend itself to snapping together and being able to hold a pose. But a lot of those plastic joints weren't strong enough to support the weight of those die cast metal pieces. And it seemed like the molding was very oftentimes not very detailed, uh, not very crisp. And so the, the toys just didn't end up looking nearly as good as as you would want them to from a, a a transformers line whose whole thing is die cast presumably high quality toys so yeah he's plastic but he's really really well done plastic so uh and you know you get you got lots of ways to to shoot wheelie and that's never bad so uh, let's see, Ty Guy says, making my late giving dinner now, cooking while watching Transformer toys is definitely the way to celebrate Thanksgiving. Ty Guy, thank you so much. A toast to Ty Guy. I hope that your late giving dinner is delicious. And Machiavellic says, you know, I love the CN on this Nemesis. Makes the contrast really pop. It's amazing. I know! And it's unexpected. You know, you wouldn't... Ideally, if you were to ask me what, you know, how you would... What kind of color scheme you would go for an evil version of Optimus Prime, I don't know that I would have, that I would have ever picked the electric teal. But it really does work. And that's a bold decision by somebody, I don't know who, but somebody really knows their color theory and uh, and did an excellent job with this toy. So yeah, uh, Robots in Disguise, Car Robots, Scourge, 
just a fantastic, fantastic toy. Um, I, I'm just going to give him a 10. I'm giving him a 10. I don't know if I ever give 10s. I, I, I just about never give... But there is nothing that I can say bad about this toy except that the discs fall out. 9.975. Okay. Uh, Kali D says, Oh God, Titanium Rodimus. No. Let's go ahead. Let's look at Titanium Rodimus. Since we were talking about titaniums. Okay, so here is Titanium Rodimus. Let's let's try and get him. Let, let's get so let's just show this, and uh, and see this fits into the theme because this is a prime, and it is a black mark on the primes. So let's go ahead and take a look at Titanium's Rodimus. You see what I mean about how the edges are not crisp. He looks he looks a little blunted. Uh, the the tolerance on on the parts seems seems sloppy. Um, I will say that this version of Rodimus is uh, I mean it's interesting, and it I I do think that it is in many ways superior to Gen 1 Rodimus, just because that is a really bad Rodimus Prime. But uh, this is the vehicle mode, and, and you know, the, what's going on up here is bad. This is just, that, that's just, it, it does, I understand that it's supposed to look like the camper overhang, but it looks like the camper overhang had a bite taken out of it with somebody that had gap teeth. So, so uh, I like the wheels. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and transform this just just for giggles. Uh, so you've got you, you can do this and I and, and I almost like that better, sort of. Um, even though it's not really part of the tran you know it's not part of the the alt mode, I, I almost well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying here. I'm trying here. Uh, we're going to pull pull the arms down and pull them out. And that's going to cause the wheels to tuck under. And then we can rotate the chest down. And we can rotate the shoulders. And we can expose the fists. And I think that we can pull, yes, we can pull the arms down and it's going to snap out. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side and rotate that around and expose the fist. And we're going to rotate the head. So we got the head here and then we got this canopy here and that's just going to rotate down like this. And then we're going to, to rotate the wings things and spread out the wing and boy there's a lot of distance between front and back here uh and, and i feel like like inherently i'm wanting the chest to kind of go in but but it doesn't and then we're going to straighten out the knees and give him his legs and also so we've got the uh the front of the hood here and that's going to connect into this part of the waist so we've got that. We're going to pivot at the waist. We can flip out the feet at the bottom and then, then we'll fold in the backs of the camper. And there we go. And that is, that is Titanium Rodimus Prime in all of his glory and his hollowness. Hello! Hi there! Uh, can, can we just do the whole live stream like this? Because I think that I think that this would be an interesting view for most people. Do, do we want to do that? No, we, we don't want to do that. Let's uh, let's go ahead and take it to the side cam so that you can see uh, Rodimus. He's... This... What I'm going to say about this is that... I feel like this is probably one of the better titanium toys. 
Uh, not the best. I, I feel like the best titanium series toy, which we should probably just do a live stream on the titanium toys. You know, they don't really fit into any other category. They're sort of their own thing. So maybe sometime we'll just go through my titanium collection and the good, the bads, and the ugly. Um, as, as titanium toys go, he is one of the better ones. And that's hard to say because he's, he's obviously got issues. Um, mostly he just doesn't, doesn't look good. And his, his, uh, you know, he is articulated, but he, he just, he looks awkward. And, uh, you know, his joints hold up better than most of the titanium toys, but he also looks like he's just not quite finished so um oh bushman brown is here so a toast to bushman brown <sighs> and so uh collie d says i hate this toy hate it i can't believe i spent money on that thing i never bought another titanium after that collie d let me tell you my first one of my first titanium toys. I got the first titanium version of Megatron. It turned into a very boxy tank thing with an M on the front. And it was in robot mode uh, in, in the package. And the detail on the treads made it look really cool. And back then, good tank versions of Megatron were actually kind of hard to come by. So, it, it looked like it was going to be awesome. I got it home, and it fell apart in my hands. The joint at the, uh, at the waist was so weak that it would sort of connect, but it would just fall apart. And it is one of the few Transformers toys that I took back to the store, and I just returned it. I did not get another one. I... I just bought a, a different transformer with the money. And here's the sad thing. They took that toy, which I had returned, you know, with in the box, but you could see that the two halves were just rattling around there. They put it back on the shelves. I don't know if some other person bought it, but you know, it was obviously defective or just bad. And instead of, I, I don't know what Toysters are supposed to do with something that's been opened and returned as a defective product, but I don't think that putting it back on the shelves is what they're supposed to do. And, and, and that, was, that was really disappointing. Um, the uh, Probably the best alter, or titanium toy was Prowl. That one was really good. Um, it, it was based uh, off of the War Within, the, uh, the Dreamwave War Within uh, Transformers incarnation of him. And it actually looked really good. And, oh, okay, we've got, we've got Prowl here. So this is, uh, this is Titanium Prowl. And he, he really does look great. Uh, let, let's go over to the other camera. So this is Titanium Prowl. He's got cool looking blue bits. He's got dynamic proportions, a really, really striking silhouette. Um, he's got full poseability. And by this point, it seems like they've actually figured out how to do these things pretty well. This was one of the last ones that they ever did. But I think that the, the taint of a bunch of bad toys up to that point had kind of doomed the line to that point. Because I know that I, as a Transformers fan, was not really enthused about the next versions and the, the next things in the line. And I imagine that a lot of collectors were less than impressed so, uh, so the line died shortly thereafter and, and, and no one was sad about that, but yeah, this is, uh, this is Prowl and, uh, he was actually a, a, a pretty good one. 
So, so back to primes. Let's uh, let's kind of make some space because uh, I'm going to try and transform this trail. You know what? Here, here's what I'm going to do. So we've got need to take all the discs out. I'm just going to take the discs out, and then that allows me to uh, to kind of hold them here. And and I've got the the mini the missile array aimed at my face, and and I'm not really comfortable with that. And so we can take that, and we can put it right. See, it just snaps right in there. Oh oh oh, and. It's trying to shoot Wesley, and Wesley would not be happy. Uh, Wesley is afraid of everything except being on my lap, and so if he got sh if he got shot unexpectedly by a plastic missile, he would probably di dig his claws deep into my flesh and then bolt. So let's try not to do that, and then we're going to close this this way and we're going to take this little thing and crumple up the hose and stick it in there and close this that way and close that that way and oh wait this this actually kind of does a keyhole thing so let's so there there's you can't see this there's a keyhole in there and in a little tab here and that goes right right in here let me see if i can get it there we go, just like that. And then you have to kind of put the hose in there. And the rubber has gotten sticky. Uh, old rubber does that, it gets sticky. And I think that I could possibly clean it with some alcohol to, to fix that, but uh, there we go. And then we will set him aside. Oh yeah, and we will put Scourge down here and we will set his discs aside. And so, oh, Tim Kangaroo is here. A toast to Tim Kangaroo. Ah. So that was, that was Scourge from 2003 uh, or 2001. Robots in Disguise, Scourge. Um, and then there was uh, this small the, the small version of uh based off of that toy mold which is just a repaint of the optimus prime that was based off of that mold this is a nemesis prime that uh this is like a legends class or something and if you can get the head out then you're more skilled than i am uh there there we go so let's let's go ahead and hold that up to the camera uh you know, pretty much same color scheme, very limited posability, but that, that that's him. And uh, he is what he is. He's, uh, you know, he's, uh, if you need to have an evil version of Optimus Prime in your pocket, then this is, uh, this is a good one to, do, to have. Uh, his legs are fused. He's got, uh, He's got articulation in the the lower arms. He's got uh, his his shoulders don't move. So yeah, they they move for the transform, but they aren't articulated. So you only get a little bit of arm articulation there, and uh, the head bobs up and down, but it does not turn. Uh, but it's little, and uh, and little transformers are cool. And uh, transforming him is as easy as doing that, and then you get. A nice little truck mode and uh he's he's essentially a spy changer now that that is really what he is based off of he is a spy changers version of the robots in disguise or car robots uh transformers but but a pretty good one actually uh the spy changers for the most part uh had had kind of awkward robot modes and uh and that really wasn't their thing you know their thing was that they turned into matchbox style cars with with wheels that would go quickly so you know you could actually have them you know you could push them and they they would just go for a long time and and that's really what the whole thing with those lines were so to have one of these that uh that was an optimus prime yeah, it works. 
Uh, Bushman Brown had to leave. Oh, I'm so sorry, Bushman Brown. Uh, you know, have a good evening. Thank you for joining us. Everybody say bye to Bushman Brown. And Joy has alerted us to a huge Hasbro Pulse sale on eBay. Would you like to take a look on stream and see if there's anything that that you want? Uh, sure, sure. I guess I can open it up on mine. Oh, you'll put a link in the chat. Okay, you put a link in the chat and then I will copy the link onto my computer so that we can we can look at Hasbro Pulse and uh, and so yeah we're see we we do we do anything here we, we do anything uh, you know we, we focus on toys related to my childhood but well our childhoods really uh, but we do anything so let's just go ahead and click on that and uh, we have that we're going to copy and paste and then close that down and i am really glad that it didn't turn off the stream because it opened it up in in firefox rather than <laughs> that was unexpected uh, so let's uh do that and let's go to the internet and what do we got? We've got Cyberverse Megatron, pass. Uh, we've got uh, Bumblebee Energon Igniters, pass. Uh, we've got Cyberverse, pass. Ah, we've got a, a, another Swoop. I've got Swoop. I don't really need that. Cyberverse, Cyberverse. There's a lot of pages. so. I am not going to bore everyone with me scrolling through. If, if you happen to get a chance and look and you see something interesting, then, you know, we can show people. We'll show, we'll show you what's on there that's cool if we find it. So, um, let's move onward and upwards because that was 2001. And that was really the first time that we saw Hasbro creating a dark version of Prime. But they quickly learned that the idea of a dark Prime, oh shoot, I just said dark a bunch of times. Uh, <laughs> oh, that had all the ice cream in it, that was good. Oh, and, and we're getting to the bottom where all of the undissolved, uh, hot cocoa mixes so I'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna drink that oh that's good it's like a uh, but probably just a honey whiskey okay yeah yeah we'll just we'll just kind of shoot it so um so yeah that was you know the the bottom of the hot chocolate is the best part of the hot chocolate because it's got the undissolved powder. But the bottom of an adult hot chocolate also has all the booze. <laughs> and that makes it, like, that's like double, that, that, you know what? You could just, like, siphon off the top half of that. You don't even need that because you get to the bottom part of the glass and that's where it's at. So, um, yeah, if, if anybody needs a, a festive drink, for, for these cold ooh, uh, for these colder nights then yes um, adult hot chocolate with a scoop of ice cream so anyway uh, they have cyberverse RC for 60 we've already got cyberverse for okay so uh, they do have so uh, I'm not gonna get her because I already have her but uh, Hasbro Pulse does have Cyberverse RC for $16.99. That's not a bad price for that toy. And it's not a ver bad version of RC either. Uh, it, it is one of the better ones. Although our, our, that's not saying much because when you're talking about Gen 1 uh, embodiments of RC, uh, they've, they've struggled with that. They've just struggled. So, um, and yes, Tim Kangaroo, it is delish. So thank you. Um, and uh, 
and I'm, I'm getting more more messages from my producer, aka my lovely wife. Uh, oh, oh, we have a the Gen 2 repaint of Generation Selects Megatron. You know what? Uh, I, I, I don't need that because I don't really like the color scheme and it says Megatron on the chest and and it's like it, it doesn't look like camo. It just looks like stripes. Yeah, it's it's not a very good version and like, you know, maybe if it were sixteen dollars rather than than twenty six but you know they knocked five bucks off you know and and it's the exact same mold as siege megatron and siege megatron is great there's there's really nothing to be improved by painting it with green stripes so anyway uh so we, let's move on to 2003 in 2003, in Transformers Universe, we would get a repaint of Big Convoy, from, uh, which I believe was a, Japan a Japanese-only Beast Wars de design of Optimus Prime as a woolly mammoth. And this is what we got. Look at that. That is nightmare fuel, people. Look at that. It has blood on the tusks. And just so that you understand, it's human blood. So this is this is actually an awesome beast mode. Um it is it is the quintessential shell former in the sense that all the mammoth parts just become kibble that hang off of Prime. And usually that kind of thing really turns me off on a toy, but it doesn't really bother me with this guy. And I think it's because he just looks so threatening in robot mode and, and, and in, his, in his beast mode. Uh, you know, he's got this, this trunk gimmick where you, you pull this, this lever and the trunk goes up. Did I mention that he has human blood on his tusks? The mammoth has red eyes. This is not a friendly mammoth. This mammoth will kill you and enjoy it. So, yeah, um, the, uh, the sculpting on it is very nice. I, I really like the gradation of the dark to the light. And I said dark again. Dark. Okay, wait here. Uh, a little, little something different. Good, good stuff. So, so yeah, you have uh, a nice gradation from the uh, the black to the silver, and then the uh, the toes of the mammoth are ivory colored, which is appropriate. Uh, which is the same color as the tusks. It, it, it really looks nice. And I've, I I don't have Big Convoy. I don't have the brown version. Uh, I've seen it. It looks fine. But honestly, it doesn't look nearly as cool as this. This is awesome. And we haven't even gotten to the robot mode yet. So let's go ahead and transform him. And, uh, yeah, he's, uh, I will say this, uh, there's a reason he started out in mammoth mode because getting him from mammoth to robot is easier than going the other direction. Getting all of, you have to get everything just right to get all of the pieces to mesh in. And, and even now this one, there, there's a little bit, you can see there's a little bit of a gap here in the back on this side. Well, you know, not, not bad, but you know, there's. So, you know, and that's after a lot of futzing. So getting, getting the panels to line up, he's not a very playable toy, but it looks like this. And, 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 and that, that makes up for a lot. So let's go ahead and transform him. Uh, so I'm going to start by, uh, I'm going to start by disengaging the front legs and pulling out the robot legs and you see how those are all just connected and, and there we have half a mammoth just hanging off of his legs 
So, uh, so let the kibble begin. And uh, then we've got these these side things, and they are on these cylinders that pull out and make it e easier for this to uh, to rotate out. And see, he's got these shooters, which are very similar to the uh, the weapons in um, original Beast Wars Megatron, the uh, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Here, let's go ahead and shoot that, and it shoots a projectile just like that. And, oh, it seems that Wesley has realized that Dudley is on the footstool right in front of me, and he's now hanging off of my lap, kind of lazily swiping at Dudley. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. Probably not. Let's, okay. Unfortunately, this is as far as the cord will let me take the camera. But Dudley is right under there. And... <laughs> And Wesley and Wesley is hearing that I'm talking about him, and he's momentarily distracted. So we'll, we'll just see where this goes. If you hear cat shenanigans, you'll know why. So anyway, uh, we we've got these uh, these side these side launchers, and and I like that they use that as as a weapon. You know that that if he's gonna have all these pieces of kibble. They're going to take advantage of it and do something with it. So the uh, they do slide out on these little uh, cylinder things right here, and that allows you to get them a little bit out of the way. So let's go ahead and pull that one out. And, uh, yeah, you can see that that right there. And then we've got the, uh, the front legs of the mammoth, and they can just go against the back of the robot legs. And those actually kind of fit together. You can see that that actually kind of fits in. And that's that's part where the the elephant parts do actually sort of transform with the figure. And you can open up the robot feet. The joints are just a little bit loose. But notice how they they made the the knockouts. Let's see if I can get this on camera. So, you see how the shape of the inside of the mammoth foot conforms to all the little details in the back of this leg. So it really does mesh up with that very nicely. So yeah, you can see that on both sides. So that, so that works really well. And then, uh, and then what we're going to do with the back mammoth legs is we're going to point them forward like this. And they are on these, well, okay, you can see there's this on both sides, and then it's got a ball joint, and so that allows you to kind of just get them out of the way. And that's really the best that you can do with these. You can just get them out of the way. Uh, they do kind of, kind of go behind here. And then we're going to lift up the, the butt flap. And uh, let's straighten out the robot legs. And now we've got these little panels here. That's where the arms are. So we're going to open those up and expose the arms. And the arms are pegged in at the fists, which helps align everything. So we're going to just pull out the arms, and we're going to do that on both sides. So let's get this to open up, and that unfolds the arm. And there we go. And see, then we got little weapons here. So once again, they're taking advantage of the kibble to add play value. And that, that, does, that does mean something. So now he's got this little weapon which, uh, which he can peg into the underside of the fist. And I'm not sure what that is. It's sort of like, it's sort of like a baton or, uh, or, or like a mace or something. But uh, yeah, it's... It, it's it's definitely kind of badass. And, uh, oh, oh, I pop. It's really hard to transform him without his joints popping apart. Because there's a lot going on here. So let's go ahead and pull out this shoulder. And then I'm going to bend the shoulder this way so that I can get the arm out. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to pull out the shoulder. And we might as well start working on the head a little bit. 
Um, you can pull these these back flaps out and that exposes the gun in the back and there's a projectile there that's also spring loaded and shoots and you can pivot that out and then we're going to split the head uh it, it 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 does it does come apart uh a bit so you have to split underneath the jaw like this so you split it like this sort of like an alien uh you, you know like like a xenomorph uh, you know, or, or actually more like Predator, like the mouth of Predator, it, you know, it does that thing. So, uh, so yeah, it does that. And then we're going to take the whole body and slide it down and that's going to expose the head. Exactly. It, it, it's exactly like that. Thank you. And then the shoulders. So, so we've got this, um, before I do the shoulders, let me go ahead and do something with the the head here so the trunk and the gun rotates around and you kind of have to get the head pieces out of the way so let's let's go ahead and rotate oh yeah i just upset the cats um ah! so uh ideally you don't pop the pieces out of joint but they they do want to pop out of joint and I'd rather they they just pop apart than break, but I wish they didn't pop apart quite so easily. And so you've got the tail going down his back. And then you've got this gun here, which, which can go down like that. And then you've got, you know, he's got, he's got kibble pieces everywhere just everywhere there it's inescapable kibble let's uh try and pop that on there uh i'm gonna i i, I don't even know completely what to do with it i think that i'm gonna just pivot them up that way to kind of keep them out of the way and so there we go we've got that going like that and now you can take the shoulders this way and then kind of maneuver the arms into a more natural position and if you want to pull out those uh those beating sticks and do that on each side and let's go ahead and get that shoulder in place and now we swivel his waist around you're going to move the trunk out of the way while you do it and then there we go and now he is a robot uh we, we can we can kind of aim the uh well you know i'm just going to leave those pointed backwards for now uh at any point you can decide to rotate these around into a firing position but i'm just going to leave them out of the way for now and uh there we go that is 2003 Transformers Universe Nemesis Prime based off of Big Convoy. And uh, he's a monster. He is just a monster. Let's go ahead and show him on the other camera. So here he is. And he's like 1000% badass. I mean look at that just look at that this guy oh i guess you can put out the uh the little horn things too if you want i don't really like them uh you know it's, it's one thing that uh, that i i don't think it really adds anything to the aesthetic so i just tend to leave them in um the the clear bits in the front are fantastic and they're really reminiscent of a generation one more classic optimus prime look which is one of the things i really like about this toy i love the the way that the mammoth head splits and frames his silhouette i mean he looks just terrifyingly menacing just just terrible and uh let me get that into focus so, uh, Kyoji says this might be a, sh a shell former, 
But Beast Wars Neo had the ultimate shell former, Break the Maximal Penguin. So, oh wow! Huh! Okay, you know what? I kind of have to, to bring that up on my internet view. Um, break Maximal Penguin. And if I could spell, that would e that would make it even better. So, oh wait here, uh, open image in its own tab, maybe. Open image in new tab. There we go. Come on, let me. Oh gosh, Google, don't be. I remember when Google Images was good, and it's not now. So. So thanks for not being good, Google Images. So here is Break the, uh, the Maximal Penguin. Uh, it's not a very good image, but that's, that's him. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Kyoji. A toast to Kyoji for showing us Break the Maximal Penguin because that's pretty awesome. Uh, it's like... Look, I have the entire front half of a penguin for shoulders. That's that's so bad. Uh, <laughs> wow, that that is something. Uh, <laughs> so let's see. Uh, and uh, so anyway, getting back to to Nemesis Prime, uh, he, he you know he looks like this. And the colors are fantastic. I love the the tan bits along with the teal and the red. But but you know that's not all that makes him amazing. He also has. Let's see. There it is. Look at that. He has a dead matrix, and that is kick-ass cool. Uh, let's. Now don't don't fall over on me, Nemesis. Just just kind of bear with me. So yeah, and the handles are oriented so that he can hold it. And uh, this thing, that's so cool. It is just so cool. And the way that it's integrated into the chest is beautifully done. It's everything about this toy is just. Yes, it's it's a shell former, but it's it's a really cool one. It, it and this is oh poor poor Wesley. He he's I had to shift my legs and he's not happy. So yeah, I'm sorry. Here, do you need to go get down? Poor kitty, poor kitty. Yeah, you, you, are are you are you thinking about it? There he goes. Okay. I lost my cat, but I gained my blood circulation. So, you know, you, you, you lose a little, you get a little. Uh, so, yeah, um, Nemesis Prime. This is the first Nemesis Prime toy that I ever got. This toy is what made me fall in love with the concept of Nemesis Prime. Every other version of Nemesis Prime that I see, I compare to this one. And, and I, I'm, I'm not blind to the massive amounts of kibble. And, uh, and, and I'm not, yeah, I'm fully aware of how awkward it is to play with and to transform. But boy, the result is so rewarding. And, and this is where You'll, you'll hear me talk a lot about, you know, like, for, for instance, characters like Scourge here, where the Transform has some interesting moves, but for the most part, it is simple enough that it makes it very fun and playable. And, and I value that. But as a, as a collector who has, at this point, thousands of figures. Shameful a number of figures. I don't need for every figure to be the same. I don't need for every figure 
to be simple. You know, I can appreciate the simplicity in a well done simple design, but I can also appreciate the art in a complicated design and, and the accomplishments of the engineers. You know, there's, you have different toys for different moods. Sometimes you're in the mood for something that you can just fiddle with, that you can just transform back and forth over and over again as sort of a, 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 a nervous habit that helps that helps make you feel better just by that tactile, that tactile sensation of turning a guy back and forth. You know, my when I uh, look at that Sharpticon or that that Alligatorcon, I'll sit there and I, I might be watching a show in the evening or something, and I'll just transform him back and forth between alligator mode and and uh, robot mode, just because it's. It's satisfying. It's fun. And it it just makes me makes me happy. You get a toy like this, and yeah, I struggle every time I transform it. And I will spend 20 minutes getting him into his mammoth mode. And then another 20 minutes just trying to finesse all the parts so that all the little panels fit together the way that they're supposed to. But once I get it there, it's good. So, so yeah, um, he's a shell former, but he just looks amazing. And he's a lot of fun. He has a lot of articulation. And yeah, you have to work around the, the massive amounts of kibble, but you can still do it. And you can fold in the little extra weapons. And uh, right here, let's let's fold in the little extra weapons because I said fold in the little extra weapons. And this little we weapon just snapped out. There we go. So we'll fold in the little extra weapons. You know, you can you can open up his chest. You can pop out the dead matrix. You can you can close his chest up and then uh, no, I, I put those in. I already talked about that. I, I, I don't like them. Uh, Monica was just saying, go like this. Uh, yeah, there's there's little horn things. And and I don't think that that adds anything to them. Yeah, Monica likes the horns. I'm not as big on the horns. I don't need the horns. They're there. And you can you can do you. You don't have to do me. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, and I can, and you can do this and have him hold Crazy. a lot. Boom! <clears throat> inappropriate exactly and you can have him hold out his his dead matrix and be like darken your latest hour and you know whatever he would say at that moment machiavellic says hey guys i wanted to ask i recently was able to get my hands on a spider-man i wanted to re repaint but i don't know what kind of paint i should get never painted figures before uh that's that's a uh, that's a tricky question, and and here's why: it depends on what that Spider-Man figure is made out of. If it is made out of rubber, then then most of your aerosol paint paints are never going to dry on uh, on that surface. Um, yeah, I think that uh, PVC figures sometimes have that problem. Now, if it's just a regular plastic, like Transformers are typically made of ABS, styrene, and sometimes acrylic for the clear parts. And, uh, and so ABS readily takes paint, styrene readily takes paint. Uh, acrylic, usually those parts you're not painting anyway because they tend to be the translucent bits. But, um, but when you're getting, like, like if I were to try and paint this trunk, there's a very high priority or a very high likelihood that the paint would not want to dry because this is like some kind of a rubbery stuff. And I'm not even exactly sure what material it is. And I know that a lot of uh, superhero action figures and things like that tend to be made out of those more rubbery materials than injection molded plastic. So 
look at the plastic, see if you can even find a symbol or something that, that says like PS or a recycling code or something like that that can give you some indication of what the materials are. And then look for paints that work on those materials. Um, so yeah, I, the, the testers are enamels and, uh, and enamels, you can also test. And that, that's not a bad thing to do. Uh, either maybe look for a similar figure or just test in an area that, uh, that you're going to be covering up or isn't, uh, isn't very, uh, very prominent to, uh, to try a few tests with paints to see what works. Uh, yeah, it's, I use a lot of, uh, I use a lot of the Krylon Max paints, the ones that have uh, that are like a two-in-one paint with primer. I also use basic Krylons. Krylon uh, tends to like their basic paint, I believe, is a lacquer-based, and that works pretty well on ABS and other uh, Transformer plastics. The uh, enamel paints take longer to dry. But, uh, but they tend to be a little bit tougher and hold up to some abuse. Um, I tend to use enamels on die, die cast parts. So, you know, I'll sand them, I'll degrease them, I'll prime them, and then I'll paint them. And then they'll chip anyway. <laughs> That's, yeah, unfortunately, my success with painting metal toys is that they look great and then you you breathe on breathe on them the wrong way and, and you do all these things to prep the surface and they still want to chip so um yeah that's uh let's see oh so al stinson is here a toast to al stinson welcome amanda is here thank you for coming amanda and grayscale is here Ah, oh, a toast to all three of you. Thank you for coming. Um, yeah, that's some that's some warmness in my belly. That that that, that feels good. So <laughs> let's go ahead and put the dead. Oh yeah. So this is what we got. Uh, this is this is probably my adult beverage of choice. If it's not some kind of fruity girl drink that doesn't taste like booze if it is going to taste like booze this is the booze that i want it to taste like so uh so here you go and uh let's just put the dead matrix back into his black heart and uh we will set him aside and so that is transformers universe uh nemesis prime with his with his shooting bits i'm trying to get one of his shooty bits back into its shooty bit slot and uh and it, you know it, it has another shooty bit here and I, I believe that that detaches but i don't want to detach it because then getting it back on is hard so you know he can do that and uh and i think that there's a uh, a second one there is there a second one there? Let's see. Uh, can I go further? Yeah, yeah. So that's double barreled. And you just turn the little knob and uh, and it shoots both, which is pretty darn cool. And we'll put those back in there. Ah, there, it go there it goes. And put this back in there. So yeah, he's got... He's got shooty bits, he's got kibble, he's got a matrix, he is totally badass. And, uh, and yeah, they even have these translucent red parts. And I have to say, I love the red with the black and the dark blue. And I said dark again. So. So that is Transformers Universe Nemesis Prime uh, repaint of Big Convoy. Once again, uh, 
I feel like this toy is superior to its original counterpart. It, it just looks so good. And it's so badass. Uh, it, it, it makes me happy every time I pull them out. It just does. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, you, you, you're going to spend a lot of time every time you transform him. But whether you're putting him in his kick-ass robot mode or putting him in his kick-ass mammoth mode that has blood on the tusks, it's worth it. Just is. So that is Nemesis Prime from 2003, but it's not the only Nemesis Prime that we got in 2003 because at the same time that Hasbro was releasing that as part of the Nemesis line, they also released this as part of Armada. Or universe? What was Oh, the Nemesis line? They should have a Nemesis line. I know I said Nemesis line, uh, universe line, but they should have a Nemesis line. So, <laughs> yes. Um, yes, it's part of the, the universe line. So, <laughs> I love you. So, uh, they also released this. For the Armada line, this is Transformers Armada Nemesis Prime. And uh, he is, you know, he obviously is not nearly as badass as Transformers Universe Nemesis Prime. But uh, he is a straight up remold of the small version of Transformers Armada Optimus Prime. And those of you who were in last night's live stream will remember that I love this mold. Love, love, love this mold. Uh, this is, it, it's just, I love this vehicle mode. I love the big knobby tires. I love the kind of squat design of the truck. And I love how how mechanical it looks and kind of futuristic, a little bit otherworldly, but at the same time, not completely alien. It's, you know, it's not a realistic truck, but it's a cool looking truck. And, uh, and it's excellently playable. And of course you have the, uh, the blue that is the opposite of a of a light blue <laughs> and uh and the uh, kind of tan you know the 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 sort of uh, almost brown but kind of a muted brown um on the uh, on the sides and on the grill and of course his his mini con also um i don't remember i know that i think that the original mini con was overrun and I, was his name run over? Please tell me that his name was run over. If, if the original was, was overrun and they didn't name it run over, then I feel like they lost an opportunity. So, but we're, we're going to find that out in just a second. Okay, yes, good, good. So, yes, the evil version of overrun is called run over. That's great. Okay, my, my hat's off. To the people at Hasbro who decided that Overrun should have an evil counterpart called Run Over. That, that's great. So this is his Minicon. And uh, see, this would have been an excellent opportunity uh, for, the, for the original to have him be named Leader One. Uh, I think that probably for copyright reasons, they didn't want to violate... Like, I know that they have rights to the GoBots' names and and their... I don't think that they have the, the, the likenesses of the Machine Robo toys. And so there's this weird line where they're allowed to use the names and, and the property, but... If they were, I think that if they were to say, okay, this guy, let's go ahead and show him. 
this guy is leader one because the version for Prime was was a, a gray color. And, you know, he, he kind of has a little bit of a leader one look to him. Uh, you know, a little bit. Um, what was that? Uh, he was with, with Armada Megatron, and he turned into, like, a little uh, ATV vehicle with, with cannons or something. But, uh, so, my guess is that for legal reasons, they, uh, they did not, yeah, um, this is, now, I, I think this is a recolor of him, because, uh, because the other one is probably with Megatron. It, it but this was... This is a recolor of the Minicon that came with Armada Megatron that was called Leader One. Obviously, it doesn't even transform into a jet or anything. They're just reusing the name. Um, and I suspect that the reason why they didn't give this guy, well, the Optimus Prime version of this guy, the name Leader One, is because then Bandai, I think that Bandai is Machine Robo. Uh, I, I, they might have been able to go after him and say, hey, 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 you, you name that leader one leader and, and it's a, and it's a gray jet and the original leader one was a gray jet based off of machine robo and that's our trademark. And then it's like, so just to keep the lawyers from having to do anything, they they called it overrun and now this is run over he's got this robot mode this robot mode is yeah you know, as mini cons go this is not a bad robot mode uh his his legs do separate there, there we go so you can separate the legs oh bless me his uh i kind of wish that his his nose cone went the rest of the way down but it does not uh, I think that on my Optimus Prime, I might have kit bashed it so it went the rest of the way down, which is probably why the last time that I looked for it, that part was missing. Uh, it, it has a tendency, you know, some of my kit bashes don't work as well as other ones. Uh, <laughs> it just happens. And so you have that, uh, you saw it in the gun mode where it was, uh, you know, kind of like this, which is a perfectly acceptable gun mode. And you can, you know, you can have that more facing forward if he's going to hold it like as a uh, handheld weapon. And then for the uh, the jet mode, peg the the arms into there, and then you flip the handle down, spread out the wings, and now he's a little jet. He's he's a fine little jet. Uh, this is. This is probably one of the, the better Minicons. Yeah, Minicons are up and down. Some of them are actually pretty decent little Transformers. Some of them are bad. Oh, some of them are bad. But but this is a, a pretty good one. And, uh, and then we've got, of course, Nemesis Prime here. Love this mold. Uh, it's just fun. It's just a really fun toy. It's solid, it's substantial. The vehicle mode looks good. Let's go ahead and turn it into a robot. So I'm going to flip the feet down. We're gonna pull it out. Yeah, we're, we're not really doing anything all that different. Uh, I'm gonna spread out the legs and pull the, the feet down so that he has knees, because knees are important. Uh, he has he has little flaps here that allow his legs to move around without being impeded by the panels. And that's great. You know, that's something that just makes, it gives him a lot more posability and makes him look good in both robot mode and vehicle mode. The arms spread out from the sides. In a lot of ways, he reminds me very much of the laser prime design because a, a lot of his moves are very very similar we're gonna pull the arms out we do have to disengage the grill and just collapse it against the chest just like that and now you can pull the arms out all the way and then snap those up yeah you can do this this is wrong uh that is correct and then you pivot the arms forward, pull the sleeves up. 
Yeah, he's got sleeves. I, I'm, I'm just standing by it. And so he's, you look at him and for one thing, he's a, he's just a fantastically proportioned figure. Let's go ahead and look at him on the other camera so you can really appreciate this. Um, he's got great proportions. He's got great poseability. It's a very unique look for Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime, you know, usually every version of Optimus Prime that doesn't turn into a monkey or isn't based off of Monkey Prime has, has the windows in the chest. And this one manages to still look like Optimus Prime without having windows in the chest, without having smoked stacks up on the shoulders. Instead, he's got the smoke stacks on his arms where they look like blasters. And that works really, really well. And then he's also got this gimmick, you know, because uh, you know, as part of the Armada line, they had uh, Minicon activated gimmicks. So you can take this guy and he's got his Minicon port. You can plug him, plug the Minicon into the back like this. And then he's on this sliding switch and that causes him to do, to jiggle his arms. Uh, just like that. And I don't know if that's punching action or shooting action. Uh, whatever the case, it actually does work really, really well. It's not something that I do a lot, but of all of the Minicon uh, gimmicks that they shoehorned in, uh, actually he's, you know, he looks better if you do that because then it's kind of on his back. It kind of gives him wings, sort of. It's like Red Bull. His name should have been Red Bull because it gives him wings. And, uh, and so, yeah, you can, you know, here, let me try and... So, yeah, he's... He's either, he's either going, and that's how I see it. You know, that, that to me is like, he's just shooting back and forth. And as the recoil from this, this gun brings this back, he's shooting with this one and just letting that action self repeat and laying waste to everything in front of him. Either that, or he's just jabbing, uh, you know, kind of flailing. Uh, Osaka Jack is here! Okay! Hey! Welcome, Osaka Jack! I toast to Osaka Jack. <sighs> so, yeah, he's... Now, I will openly admit that this, this version of, Menace, of Nemesis Prime is not nearly as, uh as menacing looking as the two as the transformers universe version but uh but he's his colors are great he's still he's still sporting that dark blue and teal and tan color scheme and yes i said dark And, uh, and I love this robot mode. And he's even got, okay, his ankles are on ball joints, which means that he can spread his legs out and then still be firmly planted. It makes him very, very stable. You can get him into some cool poses. He's got a twist at the knee, which also helps with doing, you know, getting into cool poses. His, his shoulders come out. He's got elbow joints. He's just... His, his head is on a ball joint. So that I, I love, I just love this mold. And, uh, and it makes me happy every single time that I get to get to show off one of these versions of Armada Prime because um, the big one sucked. And, uh, and it, it's funny because it looks almost identical to this except bigger so you think that it would be great but it's not it's bad and uh and we talked about that on the worst of primes live stream so uh so yeah this is 2003 transformers armada nemesis prime another excellent 
excellent toy. Like, this is three in a row. Okay, we have had three absolutely excellent versions of Nemesis Prime in a row. Every one of these I would absolutely recommend. I, I think that you, if you ever get the chance to pick them up, and uh, and it's a price that you're willing to pay. You're you're not going to be disappointed because they're just they're just good toys. They're just good toys. They're very very fun and very different. You know, obviously the uh, you get Universe Nemesis Prime, and uh, you put him on your shelf, and you do have to worry that if Toy Story is true, he may try to kill you in your sleep. Whereas this one, I, I, I feel like he might, he might try to tie my shoelaces together, so, which is why I wear flap shoes, that, just so that you know. Um, so, yeah, uh, that is Transformers Armada. Now, I will say that the Armada cartoon incarnation of this character... Uh, uh, just kind of a yeah he he just i think that he ran around yelling his name nemesis prime and and he was just like a he was mindless and he was being controlled by sideways and oh, uh, it, the armada cartoon um looking back on it the armada cartoon was not the worst Transformers cartoon ever. Uh, at the time that it was out, I I was not happy. But I did sit down and watch it a couple years later, and and it was it was okay. There were things to like in it. Uh, Starscream, for example, the the final fight between Optimus Prime and Megatron. I mean, when Prime pulls off Megatron's treads, that's badass. Uh, Unicron, everything, you know. So there were some great things that happened in that series, but there was some bad in that series, and it start and that started a a many year tradition of really, really horrible Transformers TV shows. Just well, okay, Robots in Disguise kind of started it, but. Robots in Disguise was, you know, that that wasn't even enough of a series. Like, it doesn't fit in anywhere. And I, and it could have come and gone, and I don't think that, that anything that was done really affected the lines in any significant way, except that they started Prime as a fire truck, which maintained itself, uh, you know, for, for a little bit. Um, or at least it was something that, that they, they were willing to do. But, um, yeah, Armada, the, Armada's take on Nemesis Prime was, was not good. And, uh, but you can, you can ignore that and still appreciate the toy. And so, all three of those, fantastic. Let us Move, move on a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead to Transformers. Let, let's see. I'm, I'm trying to keep these in sort of pseudo chronological order. Um, let's see. Oh, Ty Guy says, I do wonder what Clay's opinion on Rescue Bots. So I have not watched a, a lot of Rescue Bots. I've seen it and I've seen the toys. And uh, obviously, it's it's made for for very young children, and uh, and I have to say that like some of the toys that I've seen are, are pretty interesting, and some of the episodes that I've watched are actually very well done. As a, uh, it's not it's not for me. Uh, I'm I'm old and crotchety, and I require something a little bit more from my entertainment and from my toys than something that is very specifically aimed at a, a preschool age group or a very, very, very young elementary age group. And uh, if I had kids, 
I would absolutely have them watching Rescue Bots. And I, I have a friend, in fact, he's a friend that some of you have seen uh, in the chat on these live streams uh, named M Mike Spicer. And he has a son. And, uh, and they, they, they started out, I, I believe they started out watching res Rescue Bots and getting those toys. And now they have moved on to Cyberverse. And so... You know they're they are on the road, and uh, and they're loving the toys. And every now and then they'll get something at like a secondhand store and say, "Hey, do you know who this guy is?" And you know, kind of challenge me to see if I can pick out the name of a character from a series that I don't follow. So uh, yeah, um, I would say that my opinion on Rescue Bots is uh, pretty favorable, and, and I have to say. Uh, the Optimus Prime that turns into a T-Rex, that's badass. That, that's pretty cool. I, if, I, if I ever had the chance to pick that up cheap, I would happily get the Optimus Prime that turns into a T-Rex. Because why would you not? It doesn't matter if it's a kid's toy. It's Optimus Prime as a T-Rex. All the coolest things in the universe mashed together. So, yeah. Um... That is, that is uh, and, and Cyberverse, you know, I, I haven't followed Cyberverse, but I would like to. Uh, I just, you know what, I, I, I get busy and I, I don't get to spend as much time vegging out as, as I would really like to. It's, it's one of my life's deepest regrets. So anyway, uh, a toast to uh, to Christopher Remley for a very good or, or Ty Guy Ty Guy for asking a very good question, and a toast to Christopher Remley for being Christopher Remley. <laughs> Ooh, that's the good stuff. Yeah. So. Let us uh, move ahead just a little bit to Tr Transformers 2008. So uh, by this point, Hasbro has figured out that there is a market in adult collectors. They had been teasing us with some homages in previous lines and, uh, and every now and then we'd get a character that was using an old name that actually looked like his Gen 1 counterpart. But uh, then they came out with Transformers Classics. And that's when they were really seriously reimagining Generation 1 characters and trying to do new things with them and give them interesting new designs while still capturing that that those Gen 1 personalities, those Gen 1 likenesses, and some of them were very, very good. And one of the ones that was very, very good was Optimus Prime. They did a great job with Prime, and it was just a good, solid, modern-looking Prime toy that turned into a, a very good truck. There was no trailer. There were no gimmicks. It was just a really good Prime toy. And then in 2008, in Transformers Universe, we got a repaint of that toy, of course, as Nemesis Prime. Here he is. Now, this version, you'll see they've gone with blue in the translucent parts, and I have to say, it's not as good. Um, the red is just more menacing. This, this looks great. Don't get me wrong. This is a really, really nice toy. I love the gray bits, the dark blue, and that I said the thing I had to take more. Oh, darn. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it, the the vehicle mode looks excellent. This is a great mold. We've got the smokestacks on the back that look great. We've got the the airfoil here that looks great. The stripes are very nicely done. Um, 
Now, I will say that the blue with the black, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure that it works. You know, I'd almost rather just see it black. And I know that that the that the blue is part of the color scheme, but I feel like in this incarnation, it, it doesn't quite work as well. Um, it's not bad. It still looks fantastic. But uh, and, and then we have these these headlights that are the teal color, and um, and again, you know, it's. If these were red, if the windows were red, I think that it would look better. Uh, I could even see, and I know that production-wise, they're not going to do multicolor deco on this thing. But if they were, like a teal stripe here, you know, taking making some of those bold decisions like they did with Laser Prime um, or Laser Nemesis Prime, however you want to look at it. Uh, nonetheless. He still has an awesome vehicle mode. Uh, very, you know, nice modern looking truck, or at least it was a modern looking truck in 2008. It's still a modern looking truck. You know, this is, this is a great vehicle mode. It's, uh, it, it wouldn't have hurt it to have some, uh, like if the bumper were this steely gray, I know that we're not gonna get vacuum metalized parts, but maybe a nice metallic gray for these parts rather than this dull plastic gray. Um, it stands out a little bit because of how nice everything else is. And then when you get to that that dull gray, it, it, it doesn't it, it doesn't pop. So uh, but nonetheless, overall, this is still a really, really nice looking toy. And uh, and let's go ahead and let's transform it. So uh, we're going to take off the smokestacks and the smokestacks, they're, they're cool. I mean, somebody really, really smart, really, really talented came up with this. My hat's off to them. I don't know who they are. I, you know, this, this is where I wish that we knew the names of the designers and the engineers on these projects. Like... Would it be so bad if Transformers packaging actually had credits on them that said engineered by this person, design concept by this person or these people, colors by this person? I want to know that because if I knew who they were, I would absolutely be repeating their names and toasting them with and saying, hey, you guys did a great job. And since, and and I'm going to say, because who knows, this is going on the internet. Maybe they'll do it. Maybe they'll Google themselves or their products and they'll look. So to the engineers of, of all these guys that I've been talking out about, a toast, the, the designers, the color people, the engineers, the whole team, a toast. You guys have made my life better. I hope you know that. So, uh, Al Stinson says, Darkwing Prime, it's the crossover no one is ready for. <laughs> oh, I am ready for Darkwing Prime. It is funny how Nemesis Prime and Darkwing Duck have very similar color schemes, but Darkwing, like the Transformer Power Master, he has exactly Darkwing Duck's colors. It's uncanny. So, I am the terror that flaps in the night. I am the combination lock of the vaults of justice. I am Darkwing Duck. I love Darkwing Duck. So, anyway, uh, <laughs> so we have this, uh, the smokestacks, and you flip out these, these little panels here. And then you fold these back and then you fold the whole thing in half like this. Make sure everything lines up and boom, it turns into that. That is a transformation right there, boys and girls. That is cool. Look at that. And, and if you want it to look like a pistol, do that. I mean, it's so cool. It is so cool. This whole thing. I mean, is, is anybody, is anybody 
looking at that? That is so cool. It just does. It does all of that, and this is just a gun. That that is love. That is somebody who really cares about this project. Making those little details really matter. They could have easily given us smokestacks that just kind of pegged into the back and, oh, you can pull them out and he can hold them as a gun. But they were trying to do something special and that's what they gave us. And I would love to know who came up with this because I have to wonder if they, real if they ever thought, oh, you know, this... I, I, I really think this is great, but nobody else is going to care. I care. I notice. And I want you to know that I appreciate what you did. So, uh, that's, that's just the smokestacks. We've also got the airfoil here. And uh, we can take this off. And now, so we're going to, uh, this, this does stuff. We're going to fold it in half like this. We're going to fold that out like that. And then we're gonna fold out the nose and look at that. That is another gun. That's cool. Come on. You know it. You, you gotta admit it. That's cool. He's got two really cool weapons that undergo complete transformations. And here, let me show you something else that I really, really admire. This is still a truck. It is not, it has not visibly lost any of its credibility as an earth vehicle. You don't have the, the, the weapons. Yeah, you know, let's say that he's in battle and and the real Optimus Prime blows these things up because, you know, the real Optimus Prime is the kind of guy that would absolutely shoot a guy in the hand. He'd be like, oh, I must disarm him. I don't want to kill him. And then he'd shoot him in the weapon and, and blow up the weapon. Well, they've made the weapons become parts of the vehicle mode, but not essential parts to where he can still transform into a really good looking truck. Like if, I, if this was the, if this was all we got with the toy, I wouldn't realize that there was anything missing. He looks great. In some ways he looks, he looks better because if you're a gen one purist and you're not used to your, your flat front truck having an airfoil you're like no no i like the gen 1 more boxy version then you like this better and and it's great uh you can even take the kneecaps and do like that i i don't know that that Im that improves it but you can do it so so that's another thing this is something that i talk about all the time especially with a lot of beast mode transformers where they love to just take the tail off and make it a gun. Well, the tail is part of the beast mode. Now, I've seen it where they'll have, like with Cruel Lock and Doom Lock, the repaint, they have the tail and then the gun becomes a, an extension of the tail. So it just makes the tail longer. If you don't have the gun, you transform him. He's still got a tail. Oh, it was like a sword. Well, it was a sword gun, wasn't it? It, was, it had a blade and, 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 and a shooty bit. But, uh, so, so that was a great way to make it work. But I've seen other guys like the 10th anniversary Beast Wars Megatron where you're taking off the entire ass end of the dinosaur and calling it a gun. Well, without his gun, he can't transform into a complete dinosaur anymore. He's a dinosaur that's missing his ass. Don't do that! Don't do that! I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not yelling at you. I'm, I'm, and I should have asked you to, to move away from your cameras, and I got carried away. But this, this, is weapons as parts of the vehicle mode done right. It's done great. 
this this is the the uh, the thing to aspire to. So okay, you know what? Monica was right. It's it's really just a sword. Uh, I thought that it was uh, it was kind of a gun sword, but it's really just a sword. Um, and yeah, when you transform him into his uh, into his Godzilla mode, it uh, it stores in here. Let's see, like that. And it just makes the tail longer. It, if it's not there, he's still a Godzilla monster. It's not like he stops being a Godzilla monster. It's not like a Godzilla minus his anus. It's just a Godzilla monster with a shorter tail. That's, that's weapons storage done remarkably well. And that is the gold standard that they should strive for every time. Every time. I'm just going to say it. If you're taking off the back bumper, designers of Cliff Jumper, and you have to remove the back half of the car, that, that is not good weapon storage. Just saying. So... That is Nemesis Prime. He looks great. Let's go ahead and turn him into a robot. Of course, you, you know where we're starting. Because this seems to be where you start with all Prime toys. You flip down the feet and you separate the legs. Now, in this case, we're going to flip down these side panels. And then we're going to bring the legs down. And then we've got... So, we've got some panels here. And... We just need to kind of pull them out right here. And then we're going to pull them back like this out of the way. And then we are going to pull out the, the, the fists just like that. And now you can pop out the shoulders. And you can... So this is going to pivot around like this. And then that is going to go like that. That is going to swing around and boom. See what happened there? So let's do it again on this side so you can follow it. This is going to wrap around here. We can bend at the elbow here. Oh, bend it this way. Twist the whole thing around. Bend at the elbow. And then we swing this panel this way and it goes up against the arms. And yeah, that's a little bit of arm kibble, but it's, it, it's not a lot. We're going to take the front bumper and we're going to flip it underneath here. And now we're going to rotate the waist. Well, actually, we're not going to rotate the waist. We're going to rotate the entire body from the center of the chest and everything just rotates now we can put the kneecaps up and we can open up this little thing here and that reveals the head and now we flip up the head and rotate it around and then we close that little door and then we put this against the back and now so here's you, of course, can just arm him with both of his guns. And he's Nemesis Prime. He probably wants to have both of his guns. But, uh, but you don't have to do that. What you could also do is you don't have to transform this. You could... Leave this as a uh, as a an airfoil, just like that, and now you plug that into the back, and boom, it's out of the way. So there are a lot of options. Uh, his gun is a little bit loosey goosey there, you know, and at some point I may uh, I may just adjust that slightly. So that, uh, so that it uh, holds itself better into position when it's in his fist. But that is Nemesis Prime. 
And boy, that's a kick-ass robot mode. I mean, he looks great. He really looks great. I wish the windows were red. I, you know, the, the red in the windows would go a long way. Um, he is, you know, he is just blue. And since these side panels are also molded out of the same acrylic as the windows, then if these were also red, then it would just kind of give him a, a little bit more of that red menacing. You know, you'd see a little bit of red here and here. So I feel like if they had done him in red, that would have made him all the better. Uh, also, you notice that they're going with a, a slate gray. And that, of course, I mean, from a design point, it does work. It, it is more consistent with the colorings of this figure. But I have to say that there was something a little bit unsettling and, uh, and a little bit dirty about the tan that was used in these figures. It was something that that uh, that kept them from being cool and and clean. It, it, you know, it made them look a little bit more bad guy. Uh, this, you know, this obviously does look bad guy, but I guess he looks a little bit more Terminator 2 bad guy and a little bit less uh, Predator bad guy. Um... That being said, it's a beautiful toy. It's a fantastic mold, and uh, and it really does just. I mean, let's let's go ahead and put them back over here, just so you can really appreciate this. I mean, you know, yeah, he's got he he's got the uh, the side panels of the truck on his arms, and that's a little bit of kibble, and he's got a bumper behind his uh, behind his butt here, but for the most part. He has an excellent, just an amazing robot mode. It is crisp. It is clean. The details are tight. And the, the articulation is fantastic. He's got shoulder joints that move in every direction. He's got hip joints that move in every direction. He's, he's got posable feet. He's got a pivoting waist. He's even got a pivoting upper torso. So, you know, you can really, you can really do some cool stuff with him. I mean, he, he is just a, a great figure. Just a really great figure. And I mean, look at that. Isn't that badass? Tell me that's not badass. That's badass. So, uh, Osaka Jack says, you always start the same way. You flip down the feet and separate the legs. Best dating advice ever. <laughs> Oh, you know, if if anyone making a comment ever deserved a, a toast, Osaka Jack, it is you for that one. <sighs> Honey, should I have followed that advice on our first date? <laughs> Second date. Second date. So... <laughs> Oh gosh, yeah, I I never realized, but you are correct. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I I would I would love to see, like like ha okay, everybody, step away. I know I already ranted, but but I hadn't invited Hasbro closer, for, so just step away from your screens just a little bit, and 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 this will only take a second. Hasbro, Hasbro, come here. The Transformers will return after these messages. I assume you still have the molds. You, you, you hopefully don't throw these things away. You certainly hopefully don't destroy them. Um, so, we need a reissue. And we need it with these gray parts done in, in, in this tan color. And we need the clear parts done in red. Okay? Did you, did you write it down? No, Hasbro, don't tell me you'll remember. Write it down. 
Okay, okay, good, good. You're just, okay, you're just holding up a notepad and swirling around the pencil. I know you didn't take the notes. Look, look, take a screenshot. Okay, this is the tan, this is the red. Okay, now apply that. Apply that to this, right? And then, and then I'll buy it. And so will countless other suckers just like me that already own this toy. We will. I promise. We're gullible. We now return to the Transformers. So Kyoji says, I know they tried to get as much as they could out of molds without retooling, but I kind of wish they had done a little retooling on this and released it as a motor master. It would have made a great motor master. It would have made an awesome, awesome motor master. I agree with you, Koji. But what I will say is that if they had done it as a motor master, I would have been a little disappointed if they didn't have stunicons that combined with it. So, uh, yeah, it would have made a great motor master. I agree. Um, and I feel like motor master, see, that's, uh, Motormaster, before Nemesis Prime existed, Motormaster was the, the Black Prime. He really was. He was, he was the one that in the show, you know, you, you always wanted to see Prime and Motormaster square off. And then you got the toys and Motormaster was like this big and Prime was this big. And it's like, oh, this, this stopped being fun. So, yeah, um... And, and I, I, I liked in Combiner Wars, Motor Master, and then they repainted it as Prime. Um, it wasn't the best Prime that they ever did, uh, but, uh, but it was a really good Motor Master. And I personally always wanted to see a Motor Master with a trailer, and the trailer turned into armor for Motor Master, but also became armor pieces for Menasaur. I think that would have been really badass. But uh, but that is just me. Uh, so anyway, yeah, this is Transformers Universe 2008 based off of Transformers Classics Optimus Prime. Another excellent toy. Just an excellent toy. Um, probably not a must-have if in terms of really evil looking primes because honestly he looks too cool to be evil uh he he you know he's like he's sort of like evil spock where <laughs> you know sure maybe he has a goatee under that muzzle but deep down he's still subscribing to some kind of logic so um but uh that being said it's a beautifully designed toy it's a, it's a fantastic incarnation of the character. Uh, the, you know, it's, and in many ways, it is the standard that, that other Transformers toys should try to live up to. And I know that especially these days, they, they tend not to, um, you know, they're, they're, they're going through a, they're, they go through cycles, and uh, for those who haven't been aware, you know, just watch, like, look at the toys every three or four years. You'll have some really, really nice toys that that seem to have really nice detail and everything, and then the next wave will be a, a little bit cheaper looking and, and feel a little bit lighter and, and not as good, and then the next series will be very noticeably cheaper and and then by that th third or fourth wave will either be a really cheap wave or a return to a really nice high quality wave and uh and we're we're kind of in that in that they're getting cheaper phase um it hasn't gotten horrible like some of this like the transformers prime series was really bad um power of the primes that was you know that was their cheap wave and you saw it in in a lot of the toys and you saw it in the in the scope of the line you know it just it was dinky so 
Uh, anyway, Kali D says, I got the G2 Motormaster Combiner Wars. It, that is cool. Uh, so I have, I have original Combiner Wars Menasaur here. And, I mean, this is an awesome toy. He looks great. I mean, he just looks great. And, and all, yeah, I love... Oh, I spent so much money on Combiner Wars. I spent all the money on Combiner Wars. Um, yeah, Hasbro, you, you, you pretty much bankrupted me on Combiner Wars. Because <laughs> I, I, I bought everything. I, I mean, I bought every, every repaint of the Stunicons as Autobots. Not even done very well. And if you would have... If you would have repainted the aerial bots as Decepticon Seekers, I would have bought those too, and still would. But gosh, this is so much better than Gen 1 Menasaur. And, and this is so. I have talked to people at toy stores and people that at at conventions and things that are Transformers fans, and they say, "Oh, things are you know the toys they're making now just aren't as good as the Gen ones." Have you looked at Gen One Menasaur? It's not that good. I'm sorry, I have it. I I don't want to give it away, but this is better. In every way, it's better. There is nothing about Gen 1 Metasaur that is better than Combiner Wars Metasaur. And if you get the upgrade kits that give you bigger feet and more articulated cans, it gets even better than that. So, I'm sorry. As much as I love Gen 1, and I do, let's not... Ha just look at it with nostalgia filled glasses and pretend that it was without flaw because let me tell you gen 1 had flaws and it wasn't just action masters so uh anyway uh so moving onwards and upwards Let's move on to 2013. By 2013, we we have had Transformers Prime. Now, Transformers Prime was a dark time for Transformers toys. Excellent show. Probably one of the best Transformers shows that we had in over a decade this is uh, i mean what was that animated you know what you're right animated was good uh, especially if you just don't count the human villain episodes okay if animated transformers animated was a fantastic show but skip all the episodes about human villains okay delete those because they're they're cringeworthy they're bad and they're, they're, so they don't count. I've just decided that they don't count. And as long as you don't count them, Transformers Animated was a great show. But Transformers Prime was just consistently good. It was consistently good. Good characters. Good stories. Good animation. I mean, you know, for, for budget TV computer animation... It was great, and and they were they had character models where they were trying to to kind of bridge the gap between the Michael Bay look and Transformers that the rest of us actually uh, actually recognize. Oh, thank you. And you know, I, I got a refill of this, and I'm gonna take this, and I'm just gonna, yeah, there we go, <laughs> there we go, because we don't need two glasses. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what you put in that glass. Oh, you've got a look on your face like I just made a tremendous escape. Oh, okay, so uh, all right, well, um, so yes, I'll I'll be having fun tonight. That that's all I can say. Um. But yeah, uh, 
Transformers Prime had some some uh, I, I didn't love the character designs, but they were they were fine. They 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 were they were decent and recognizable and and a perfectly acceptable uh, kind of merging between those two styles and the stories were great and the characters rate were great and even the human characters I liked I never liked the human characters okay Spike and Sparkplug didn't bother me Chip didn't bother me Carly didn't bother me um, Daniel ooh, well Daniel was a step down um, Knockout Knockout was such a great character oh my gosh we had Knockout we had a very different RC but a fantastic RC Ratchet was great Bulkhead he was so good and Miko she was so good with Bulkhead you know, that was a pairing that worked so well Transformers Prime had so much great stuff and the toys were garbage. Overall, the toys were just... They they were cheap. Cheap. Real cheap. Oh! They, they felt like knockoffs. That's, you know, they were small. They were thin. They were flimsy. They were hollow. They were bad. Just a lot of, I mean, they had some great designs pulled off as cheaply as you could possibly get. My Transformers Prime collection is probably one of the smallest parts of my Transformers collection because the toys are just not very good. Uh, Christopher Remley says, the human Transformer relationships in Prime are genuinely good. Yeah, they are. And... You know, the, the whole dynamic between between uh, Mrs. Darby and Jack and the Autobots and her genuine concern for the safety of her son, which, of course, she would be. But at the same time, the need that that the, tr the clear and present danger that the Decepticons pose and the fact that she has to come to terms with the fact that Jack is genuinely helping. That, hi that his involvement actually gives the Autobots an advantage. That's a hard pill for a parent to swallow. And one of the things that I think younger viewers probably wouldn't even pick up on. Uh, so this, this is my collection of Transformers Prime. This is not a big bin. This is small bin. Most of my bins are four times this size and don't include the oversized characters. So, uh, so yeah. Um, nonetheless, there were some things that came out of Transformers Prime that were pretty cool. And this, and I know I've shown this before, but this is one of them. This is Nightmare Unicron. It is a repaint of the Japanese, the, the dire, what? You're going to have to type it because I can't read your lips. So, so one thing that happens behind the scenes is Monica will try to tell me things and she'll try to go and she'll try and whisper it because she doesn't want to be on camera or on microphone. And I can't read lips. I don't know what she's saying. She says Gaia Unicron. Gaia. Okay, so Gaia Unicron. Uh, this is a repaint of Gaia Unicron, which I believe was a Japan-only design. And, uh, and <laughs> it is amazing. I mean, look at that. That ain't cheap. That is just cool. And, uh... You know, he's got these metallic bits. He, he, he looks like that. I mean, that's just, uh, uh, yeah, there, there's teeth in there. That, uh, he looks like a samurai. And, and Nightmare is the right, is the right term for this Unicron because he is scary. Uh, let me, let me show you the box. 
because even the box, uh, Weird Al, I'm sorry, you, you can't stand on the box. Here, just stand over here. No, stop trying to fall over. Weird Al, you cooperate with me, Weird Al Yankovic action figure. Okay, here. Let's... Weird Al, you know, you are getting a timeout. So we're going to set Weird Al Yankovic action figure down. And let's see. The battery must have died on our TiVo. Oh, yeah. You know what? Our, our TiVo stopped. So, uh, or TiVo. TiVo. TiVo is very different. So, just look at the package that he came in. It's all black and white, but it's gorgeous. Oh, my gosh. This is, this is just, I mean, I could just look at this packaging all day. It is so shiny, and and the imagery is great, and oh, you know, mm, mm, this is this is good stuff. So, going back to Nightmare Unicorn. Oh, oh, so Osaka Jack has a comment. Osaka Jack says it looks like something that would give Sean Connery guns from its nose. <laughs> it's Zardoz. Zardoz! Oh my gosh! Wait a minute here, I gotta bring up that image. Uh, Zar. So, let me let me switch camera views here. Zardoz! And oh, oh wait here, it's not letting me do it. Zardoz! And images and uh, there, there it is. Open image in new tab and boom. So yeah, so this <laughs> that is uh, that that was that was Zardoz. That's what they believed that Zardoz was, and it would it would vomit guns to to the people. And it said that the guns that the gun is good, the penis is bad. So. <laughs> If you ever have several hours that you really just want to blow, and may I suggest that if you're going to try this, do it with an adult beverage, maybe other chemical enhancements, because it's, it's several hours of something starring Sean Connery it's Zardoz, and you get to see things like this, and, uh, and, wait, 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 here, wait for it, things like, like that, um, and, woo, and you think, you get halfway through, and you think, okay, you know, that wasn't so bad, but here's the thing, you're only halfway through. The people that edited this movie didn't think that they had any bad footage. And let me tell you, they were incorrect. So, uh, so this is Zardoz Unicron. And he, he looks amazing. By the way, who do we need to po toast for the Zardoz? That, that was Osaka Jack. Osaka Jack, a toast to Osaka Jack. Yeah, that, 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 that keeps the live stream pumping. So, uh, <laughs> so that is Nightmare Unicron. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wait a minute, this is Black Prime Day, and that is not Prime, that is Unicron, but it was from Transformers Prime. Huh? Uh-huh, you see? That is what we call a loophole. So, yes, Nightmare Unicron. And honestly, we're we're talking about evil evil guys. You know, usually evil versions of Prime, but most of these evil versions of Prime, the backstory is that they were created by Unicron anyway. So, why not bring the Chaos Bringer into the uh into the conversation? and look at him and gosh this is this is just 
this toy is epic. It is just epic. It's it's highly detailed and it's it's crazy to look at, but it's really really cool. Let's go ahead and uh, and I'm going to I'm going to attempt to transform him. He he's so this is this is Unicron head mode and uh, you know his he's kind of got a, a spike thing up here. He's got the horns. Oh gosh, you know, and I've seen pictures of the original version and they look good too. But I mean uh, this this is the nightmare version. It's just better. <laughs> I'm noticing a theme where you take a good toy, you paint it black, and it's better. See, that's paint it black. Yeah, that's it. Did you see what I did there? So, uh, I love him as a head, and I love the fact that he looks like a samurai warrior. Uh, but we do want to show him in his robot mode. So, uh, so let's go ahead and... Uh, and we'll take this part off and then we'll take these things and disengage them from the uh, the side things you know the sort of helmet looking thing and now we're going to so in the back here we've got we've got these and we're going to disengage one and then we're going to fold it over this way and just give it, you know, give them, give it a spiky thing. So it's got a spiky thing there, just, just like that. And now we are going to take these, these legs. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, we're gonna try not to, not to drop stuff as, uh, as we do it. So we're gonna take the, the sides, and they be, they are made of the legs of the robot. And you see that there's a hinge here, and we're just gonna pop that that way. And then we're going to flip down the foot, just like that. And then we need to get this, this leg to come down. And it does require a little bit of finessing. Uh, oh, Al Stinson has to go. Well, everybody say bye to Al Stinson. Have a wonderful evening and a great weekend, Al. Toast to Al. <laughs> So uh, you're gonna straighten out the other leg and do the same thing. Flip out the foot. Uh, you, you gotta kind of make sure that this this thing is away from the foot because it's gonna get in the way otherwise. So you have the feet there, and now at this point you can actually bring in these panels and bring them up against the leg, and they'll just fit in right like that. And it's funny because it, you know, with the odd jointing of this thing, it doesn't seem like things should fit together, but they do. And uh, and now we're going to do a little bit of twisting. We want to get the uh, so we need to get the the knee things in the front, and then these shiny bits out on the outside of the legs. And so we're going to do some twisting. And, and and then you've got legs here like that. And then we're going to pull out the shoulders from underneath this cavity here. And on this side, we've, we've got an arm and a uh, and the most horrific bludgeoning weapon in the universe. And now we're going to take this piece and we're just going to fold down this little bit right there that's going to fold inside and then this is going to fold down and you're going to grab the head with your finger and let the rest of this this is the chest it's going to fold in and snap against there and then you've got the unicron head right there which is actually a couple pieces so you need to make sure that that's seated properly and now you kind of just get the shoulder things sort of out of the way. Uh, do a little bit of twistiness to get these things into the back. And then you take this thing and you can actually close up these things at the bottom. And then there's a peg there and that will peg into the other arm. And so, and he, he pretty much, his hand is a reaping scythe. 
uh, you know, it can go like that, and uh, it can go like that, and so he he is the the Transformers version of the Angel of Death, um, or the Demon of Death. However, you want to look at it. He is terrifying. He doesn't have hands because he's freaking Unicron and he doesn't need to pick up a cell phone. He needs to end your existence. And he will do it by, with, with either this hand or this hand, neither one is particularly pleasant. There are no good options. Just so that you know, you say to him, hey, instead of killing me, maybe we go to the arcade and we play some Pac-Man. And he, he holds up his, his scythe hand and he says, do I look like I could play Pac-Man? I kill. That's what I do. And then he kills you. So, yeah, this is, this is Nightmare Unicron. And he is amazing and amazingly terrifying. Let's go to the side camera. So, as a, as a Gen 1 fan, obviously my, my first and, and most, most influential uh, exposure to Unicron is during Transformers the movie. And, uh, and, you know, in that incarnation, Unicron is larger than life. He is a transforming planet that eats other planets. And you kind of feel like that concept for the character has gone as far as it can go. Like, what are you going to do? Say, oh, the next ver Unicron is upgraded. Now he eats solar systems or eats galaxies. And I feel like you reach a point of diminishing returns because at, at the once once you're past the point of eating an entire planet, you know, it's sort of, it's sort of like Starkiller Base. Starkiller Base is just a bigger version of the Death Star that can kill an entire system rather than exploding a planet. And I don't have any problems with Starkiller Base, but it's not scarier than the Death Star because at that, once you get to the point of your space station that destroys the planet, then I can't connect with the scale of destroying the whole system. Uh, you know, as a human, it, it, it's, I can't, I don't have the capacity to care more just because it's bigger. And so if you say, Unic if you try to take Unicron and say, okay, well now Unicron's bigger or something, that wouldn't work. It just wouldn't work. But you look at this. This is, this is something that, in my imagination, I'm seeing Prime powering down for a recharge cycle. And, and this is what starts chasing him in his dreams. And this is, this is the thing that he has visions of and forces him awake and... This, this, this is the thing that actually scares Prime. A thing of pure, unstoppable evil and death in a very personal way. And he looks, that's the thing, they've made him look like the agent of death that he is. And it's not so high concept that you can't connect with it. It's personal. And it lives in the heart of Earth if Transformers Prime is to be believed. This is a beautiful, terrible design. 
that transforms into a beautiful, terrible design. Fantastically executed. Uh, so, so getting there? Yep. Okay, so, um, so yeah, that is the repaint of Transformers Prime uh, Gaia Unicron as Nightmare Unicron. A another, he's not Prime, but he is a black repaint of Transformers Prime. <laughs> see, see, I did the thing. Uh, and, and another excellent, excellent thing. And, uh, and, and a well, you know, this is a fantastic reimagining of the character and well worthy of the name Unicron. So, uh, moving on to Power of the Primes. Power of the Primes had, uh, had an Optimus Prime that, uh, that had a very unique gimmick to it. The, uh, the, uh, the cab transformed into Orion Pax, and then it combined with its trailer to make Optimus Prime. And it did it very, very well. But what it did not do... Okay, so this, this, has re, uh, this version has some remolded parts that were not with the original version. So they've actually... It's not a straight-up repaint. Uh, it is a remold. And the original Prime had this going on. And, uh, and as bad as this looks black... Let me tell you, it looks a lot worse in red. Uh, every ver every photo of the toy is from this angle so that you can't see the arms that are really, really clumsily just kind of sticking out of the back that don't look like anything. Um, it is... It, it is almost embarrassing and um you know this like i said power of the primes was that you know that third line after you had combiner wars where things were pretty pretty nicely done and then you had you had uh titans titan returns titans return that that was okay and then you had power of the primes where we got these these shitty ass foil foil stickers that were just abysmal and some some really cheaply made toys some really really cheaply made toys and uh <clears throat> this was uh this was a good concept but i don't understand why they didn't know uh, yeah let's let's go ahead and show so um, this is Power of the Primes, Optimus Prime, and, and he looks great. Okay, this does look great. But boy, that vehicle mode with those arms, ooh, oh, it's bad. It, it, it's really bad. I, I, I made some extra pieces, which you can see that I've added here and here. They come off and then they attach and I did a little bit of kit bashing on this version to fix that because um, because it was bad. So uh, so we have Nemesis Prime here, and uh, and his truck mode. The the nice thing is that with Nemesis Prime, they did actually remold some parts. So he got some new weapons that Optimus Prime didn't get. And, uh, and it looks like I drilled a hole. So, uh, so I added a hole and, uh, and then I made it so that you can take this blaster and put it there and this blaster and put it there and just cover up the horrible, horrible, uh, it's, it's bad. It's so bad. I am, oh Come on, Hasbro. You, you, you've been making tr Prime transform into a truck for like 30, 40 years now. You can do better. You, you, you can just do better. And, th and then you have this, this stuff happening here that 
and and you have the legs that just kind of and and everything's hollow um it's it's not good it, it's it's just not good it, it's um it's a really i will say that the combined mode is really impressive and looks great looks great but boy oh getting there oh so anyway um so yeah i added some holes so that you can take these uh these guns and add them to the side and disguise the 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 arms they're just they're just robot arms and so we're going to take those off and i'm going to show these uh transforming and uh so with this guy let's see we, we 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 need to disengage these side panels here flip them up like that and then we can spread the legs ha <laughs> ha sock a jack and uh we take these down and look at how hollow that is i mean it's so oh come on as bro just oh and, and it and it feels light it feels very light uh and oh the 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 leg came off here we're gonna snap that back on and uh th then we'll do that and uh now we've got these arms so we're going to spread out the arms here they are let's see we're gonna pull out the arms just like that and uh Oh, oh, okay. So we have to open up the chest. So we open up the chest, and we do get a, a dead matrix. So that's cool. Um, but we'll get to that when we get to the to the large robot mode. And then we're gonna pull out these side panels here, like that. Actually, we don't have to open that yet. And then we're going to pull these out, and they're gonna go around the front like that just like that and now we're able to take these shoulders and swing them around to the side of the robot and we can flip out the fists and we need to oh oh and then we take this chest and we close that over the top and we have a small nemesis prime guy and we're gonna we're gonna take the arms and put them into a more natural position just like that and oh we flip out the feet and so we have small nemesis prime and uh you know this is uh maybe nemesis packs i don't know um oh whoops whoops he has a remolded head, so yeah, I I like for one thing they've got the red windows, which really which really helps a lot, um, and they remolded the head, which is also a good move. Uh, if they had made him just a straight up repaint of Orion Pax, oh his leg came off again. Um, if they had made him a straight up repaint of Orion Pax, he really wouldn't have looked right. Uh, you know, he just wouldn't have looked menacing. And so I really appreciate that they did, they did go the extra mile and give him some remolded parts. And, uh, and this, uh, this is, uh, actually a, uh, a kind of a new version of his, uh, oh, what was the name of the bird? Giza or something like that? I think it was Giza. So he's got, uh, you know, he's got a transforming sword that harkens back to one of the other versions of Nemesis Prime that was done. Um, and then he's got this sword, which is actually a dark version of the Star Saber. And so they're harkening back to a lot of heritage of the character. And, and I really appreciate that. Uh, I, I wish that like the the legs just feel cheap and, and and you know you can ignore it but you know the 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 arms uh there, there's some some posability issues for the small robot you you can of course take these and you can attach them to uh to other places on the truck 
but uh, but I never do because I I always use them to uh, to fix him. Oh oh, here I have his arm wrong. There so there, and so his his small robot mode is is good, uh, but yeah, you know, what we really want to get to is the the trailer, because that's where things get pretty awesome. So the trailer uh, does transform. And uh, and I'm trying to remember because it, it's been a little bit. Uh, I probably should have practiced with this one, but but uh, it's been a busy weekend. I'm sorry. So we're gonna pull the feet out, and then we're gonna split this right here, and then we're going to split that there, and that gives us the ability to take the gun out, which uh, you know it's a very Optimus Prime looking gun. You know, like very Gen 1 accurate. It's nice, except it's big and beefy. So I like it. Um, we've got these side panels here that are going to fold this way. And these atta these are attached to the arms. So we're going to pull the arm out this way, pull these out. And now this is going to close against the bottom and do that. And then that can close against the bottom here and do that and these are on pivots that'll go around here and then we're going to circle that around like right there and then we've got these panels and what I do like about this toy is because of the way it transforms it disguises a lot of the hollowness that makes it feel cheap so we can take this and let's see Th this does a thing and I'm trying to remember exactly the thing that it does do uh, this goes around here and oh this goes oh 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 you know <laughs> it kind of pops apart so here let's straighten that out and that's going to go in there and that's going to close like that and then this is going to go in there and close around there and we're going to straighten that out and then close that and then go like that and then we're going to close that into the leg and so once you transform him you don't see a lot of the hollowness and that really helps now with this figure what we're going to do is we're going to take his arms we're going to fold him up like this uh, we're going to take that we're going to we got the super robot head and that's going to go there and then we can take this and actually we can fold this head inside there. And if you don't want to be able to see it from the top, you can pivot it around this way. And now when it's inside there, you won't be staring at his face. And now we take these, these arms and just kind of get them out of the way and flip in the feet. And actually, I think that I have the, the arms wrong. The, the arms are going to stay down by his sides. And so we're going to take that and we're going to fold that. And see, there's these little divots in the chest here. That mesh, meshes up with a little tab that's right here on the leg. And so that's going to go in there and lock in. And then that's going to go in there and we'll fold in the fists. You can do anything you want with the arms, really. Uh, they, they don't really disguise all that well. But now you take this whole thing and you plug it into the chest. Let's get that thing out of the way. There we go. Boom. And we'll finesse the, uh, the legs a little bit. You can take these and put them on the arms. And take these and do that. And you can give him his that and that. And boom. That is Nemesis Prime. And oh, Odd Eyes Dragon is here. Well. A toast to Odd Eyes Dragon! So, 
Welcome to the live stream. I'm sorry we're getting close to the end, but uh, I hope that you enjoy what's left. So, uh, so getting back, that is Power of the Prime's Nemesis Prime. Oh, oh, wait here. Uh, you know what? Let me let me do this. So you rotate those around. You pull up the smokestacks. You close these panels. Flip that around. Flip that around. Pull up these smokestacks. And there we go. Now we have it. That. That is Nemesis Prime. And gosh, he looks good. I mean, the vehicle mode really kind of makes you wonder. But boy, the red windows and all of the extra accessories, the, uh, the, 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 the star saber, well, the, the dark star saber, and then, you know, his his companion that turns into a sword. I mean, you know, there's there's a lot going on here. And, and you also have this, so you can open up the chest. And there is a dark version of the Matrix. Look at that. And of course, as part of the power of the Primes line, which, there we go. Um, so uh, it's actually got like a matrix enigma type thing, which comes out of this. So, you know, it's just one of these things that is compatible with any headmaster slot or any of the power of the primes combiners that have the prime armor that you can plug this into. But honestly, who actually does that? Uh, you know, what, what you want is this, uh, the only downside is that it is made in that Transformers the movie style where it has the handles going all the way around, which means that he can't hold it. You know, it doesn't have pegs for him to hold it, but, um, but it still looks great and it fits very nicely into the chest and getting to it is extremely clever. Uh, they, they just did... A phenomenal job so you know whereas I start out with you know both this this version and uh, and power of the primes Optimus they when you're when they're in vehicle mode the cheapness is obvious and it hurts them it absolutely it absolutely hurts them but you get them into their combined modes and they really look awesome. I mean, these, these are love letters to the fans. And obviously it's not the designers who are deciding that they need to be made with cut corners. Um, and you know, when you, once you get it into this mode, it doesn't look like something that has had cut corners. Uh, you can still tell a little bit of the cheapness down by the legs where things are feeling more hollow and, you know, especially the feet are, are a little bit janky. Uh, but it's a really, really cool toy. And even with those horrible, horrible foil stickers that were on so many of the Power of the Primes toys, uh, it still looks really good. So, uh, so yeah, uh, I would say that Powers, Power of the Primes is a line that has, uh, that is, that is mixed. Um, some of the toys are really, really impressive. And some of the toys suffer greatly because of the obvious uh, budget cuts. But, uh, but nonetheless, uh, the result of the combined form is fantastic. And obviously, uh, you look at Power of the Primes Abominus, that, that whole set is, is just tremendously well done. Um, 
So, you know, it has its high points and its low points. The Dinobots overall are very well done. You form Volcanicus, and, and Volcanicus definitely needed some help. Fortunately, talented people provided some upgrade kits. A little bit pricey, but boy, they make Volcanicus great. So, um, so yeah, that is Nemesis Prime loving the red and uh and he is just straight up black the, you know it's not it's not blue it is uh it, it is black and gray and teal and uh you know again i would be okay with seeing what this would look like with some of those tan parts but boy this looks awesome so i i don't know that it's necessary we are at three hours. It is 11 p.m., ladies and gentlemen. And, um, and I would love to talk about alternate universe, Transformers, War for Cybertron, Earthrise, Optimus Prime. Because he's, uh, he's a darker version of prime kind of zombie prime he's he's dead this is the dead version um but i feel like that can wait till a later live stream because you people have lives <laughs> so we're going to save dead prime for a future live stream and with that uh, we're going to wrap things up. Thank you. Thank you so much. Because this has been a lot of fun for me. Uh, we have been looking at some amazingly nice toys that, that get me really excited and get me really happy. So I I'm glad to be able to share them with you. And uh, and so I'd like to... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm out of booze, so I'm just going to drink this. Uh, so let me say a final toast and thank you to all of you who have shown up and stuck with us for a Friday night Black Prime Day live stream. You guys are the best and, and you make it worth showing up for every week. Uh, thank you so much, sincerely. Please, 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 if you haven't already, if you had fun, please click the thumbs up because uh, we, we could use that. Uh, YouTube will use that to, to promote our videos and, and try to share them with more people. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you know when we're doing our midweek live streams because we tend to do those like one or two a week, usually on Wednesdays or Thursdays, often at the same time, but not always. Uh, so, with that being said, thank you to Kyoji. Thank you, Sea Striker 87. I've seen it. Did I even toast Sea Striker 87? I hope I did. So, uh, if not, a toast to Sea Striker 87. Uh, Ty Guy and Connie and Kali D and Chris Remley and Joy and Machiavellic and Tim Kangaroo and Bushman Brown and Amanda and Al Stinson and Grayscale and Osaka Jack and Odd Eyes Dragon. Did I miss anybody? Thank you so much, all of you, for joining me on this Friday night. This has been great. I have been so happy to, to do this with you. And, uh, and you guys make it worthwhile. Join us next week because next week we are going to be doing, uh, what? Don, oh yes, Dinobots part whatever. And Don is going to be joining us. So we're going to be looking at more Dinobots. That's right more Dinobots, and we're going to have Dawn, and it's going to be amazing. So we will see you next week. Keep your eyes open because we will have something throughout the week. Who knows? Maybe two. Uh, have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a wonderful holiday. Stay safe. Stay healthy. We'll see you next week. Good night.